hey podcasters or if you're watching this on youtube or linkedin or facebook wherever you guys are watching this episode this is a new thing um just started well this is the first actual episode where i'm recording in my car in between meetings um where i get to well just save a lot of time to be honest instead of being in the studio or somewhere on site um or oh, just navigating through some traffic or well on site or in the studio it's a lot easier if i'm driving so i've got um just made some mental notes this is the first episode i'm really excited i hope you guys are too for listening to this and um yeah so just going through my day really this is um like a daily episode haven't really got a name for it yet but i'm sure it will come soon um I want to try and keep it a little bit different from the daily v like gary v so um yeah the name will come uh in due course i think the main thing is just the content get the content out to you guys okay so where are we right now well today has been whew, well it's only four o'clock and um it's been one of those days so i've just left a meeting now which is a rental property which a landlord that we're now working with who's done a rent to rent deal with a local agent in our area so we're looking after it so this is one of the properties on the other side of the company where effectively we're an agency but a very selective agency we're not actively looking um in that sense um we're more cherry picking than the deals we don't get we consider managing them so maybe that's a good tip um for some of you guys i mean that's if you are involved in rent to rent or guaranteed rent or rent arbitrage which we call it so if some of the clients or some of the people that we approach if they say no to our offer for us to lease the property from them long term then the alternative will be if we just set it all up for them and then manage it for them okay so instead of getting nothing from that deal where well, we've done the work we found the landlord, we've conducted a viewing, we've met them, we've discussed everything with them. They've said no for whatever reason. And then we fall back on the second option, which just generates revenue for the company or for yourselves, is to offer to manage the property for them, which is one structure, just a straight off management fee. And I mean, some companies like, um, well, Pass the Keys, for example, which do all of that, they charge around about 18%. Sometimes it's a little bit higher, but it's around about 18%. Um, so you can understand there's much better margins for you for managing properties like these. So that's one option for you guys. Um, for any of the deals or leads that you get that say no, there's always that second um, backup option. Okay, and while we're on the subject, the other option or solution that we offer to the landlords as well, if they say no, is for them to do a joint venture with us. So the first step would be for us to obviously lease the property. The second option, if they say no, is a joint venture. So what I mean by that in a joint venture is we would actually do everything so the landlord doesn't have to do anything at all apart from just hand the property over. We pay them a rent retainer every single month, which is more or less very, very close to, if not the full market rent. We get them to furnish it and um, we manage it. We fill it, we deal with the bookings, process the reservations, our housekeeping team, our cleaners, they deal with all of the tenant or guest changeovers and everything else that comes with it. So really we do everything and um, all they have to do is provide the property. But really we only get to that or put that offer in or you know, aim to structure that type of deal when they've just really said no to our original offer for us to do everything and retain 100% of the profit. So that's another option for you guys to consider for the deals that you don't get, rent to rent, I mean guaranteed rent, rent arbitrage, rent to rent SA, whatever the names are now, but for the last 15 years, it's the same for us. It's called rent arbitrage. Okay, so yeah, just those options, which is great for you guys. So anyway, off um, went off course a bit there. So I've just left a property where the landlord or the 
person holding the contract is well now a client of ours. They found a rent to rent property. They entered into the property, entered into the deal. And it's actually been a bit of a nightmare for them because um, there's been many problems. I think it's their first deal. So it's great that they've got their first deal, but they've had um, endless problems so far. I mean, from God dear, it's been um, the issues with the cleaning from the start. It wasn't handed over cleaned. And then they had a particular agent that promised the earth, which they do for people that have just entered into um, you know, a rent to rent SA deal, or they got it from them or in conjunction with them. And they promised these massive returns and that didn't materialize. So they found themselves promised with, you know, four or 5,000 pounds worth of bookings, um, from one company, not going to mention any names. Um, and then it materialized to something like one booking or one night and there was nothing else for the rest of the month. And um, yeah, it just left them with um, a bit of a bad taste in their mouth, to be honest. So they rescinded the contract and canceled the contract. And then they managed to get the property back because they just lied. And then they entered into another rental agreement with another company, not mentioning any names, which does uh, short let management, especially here, right on the South coast. And, um, yeah, I think their fees were too high, you know, close to you know, 19 or 20 percent. And the, the cost of the cleaning was just astronomical. And, um, you know, luckily somebody referred them to me when we had a conversation. One of my business partners actually um, in Sandbanks or Pool in that particular area, that part of the country, they referred um, this landlord to me. And luckily enough, we had a conversation led to more conversations you know just as i was entering into the deal with this other company and when i actually explained the numbers to them being realistic because funny enough the area that they have the property in is where we've got uh, you know a considerable portfolio here in the southeast on the south coast so you know we know the numbers from what studios one beds two beds three beds three bed duplexes three bed houses four bed houses five bed executive detached homes, you know, in the city center, right on the seafront, you know, every single part of the city because we cover that area for a very long time. So as soon as they told us what the property type is, and then they told us the numbers they were expecting, we were just brutally honest and just said, this is how it is. These are our numbers. Our occupancy is very high. We've been doing it a very long time in that particular city. And um, really these are more or less the ceiling rates you're going to get. Okay, sometimes there could be um, a bit of fluctuation where they could, or other companies could achieve a little bit more, but ours is consistent across the whole of the last 12 months, which is how we look at the data. So when we showed them that, it came as a bit of a nasty surprise, but a wake up call and a reality check to get them or get their feet back on the ground. So really they know where they are moving forward, what to expect, so they're not going to be let down. And when they knew those numbers, the first thing they did is just canceled um, or called off the management with the other company. It just wasn't enough for them to take nearly 20% and you know, 50, 60 pounds for cleaning and laundry, some ridiculous amount of money um, there. So yeah. They're very pleased. I've just left their property now and um, just looking at all the bits that they need to do just to get it ready. It's their first one. So I went round there and um, my assistant obviously is, is going around there as well to have a look and do the dressing and do the styling, you know, so we can present it for them, you know, just really as a gesture of goodwill. Um, how we present our properties. So I mean, styling, I mean, flowers, I mean, the throws that we use, I mean, um, all the little details and how the beds are made and how the pillows are arranged, you know, the TV off, you know, for the first set of pictures, which is the first thing that the guests will see. So obviously my stylist is, uh, is dealing with that so they can get off to the best possible start, even though it is the low season right now. Um, yeah, 29th of October. So even though it's a low season, 
we still want to help them get off to the best possible start when it comes around to the you know the high season next summer obviously then they're in for some you know, fantastic returns because of based on where it is they'll probably get closer to the numbers that they were quoted um in the high season but definitely not in the low season okay so yeah really pleased about that so um yeah looking forward to getting that photograph tomorrow and up and running for those um for that new client and then they should be very very happy so yeah that's just part of the day so far and then what else is there i mean it's just it's just been one of those days where it's it's, it's only four or four fifteen now and uh it's just been lots and lots of different things going on i mean just taken on two new members of staff in the last week and what that means for me is two new members of staff is this coming back oh no it's a broken light someone's got a broken light it looked like there was reversing and um it's getting me a bit worried there and um yeah so two new members of staff which have joined the team in my team in particular now this is for branding this is for um online presence this is for podcast editing this is for um you know some online marketing this is for some content writing and article writing and um, video editing and lots and lots of post-production which is something that we've just started to work on or go deeper into um recently you may have seen how active and busy um our, or my social profiles are so yeah we're just going through that transition right now where just scaling up and changing things so yeah in my team i've taken two new members of staff on and um one's an editor from another newspaper she's actually worked in another company for a very long time as an editor and she was doing some things on the side and now she's just a lot more active and we're obviously scaling things up so um yeah, it's more of a, a hands-on role for her now. So it's been very, very difficult for me to get ahead of these two guys and create the content, which is what I'm doing right now, talking to you guys, which is part of uh, this new series where I'm documenting my day in the car, okay? So this content that I'm creating right now will be the pillar content, which they will use. And um, I've got to get ahead of the guys to create this so I can get it across to Adam, who will then do the post-production and make it look better and add title screens and everything like that. And then he gets it across to Josie and then Josie turns it into, uh, or she transcribes it and then uses it as articles and chops the content up and uses it online, um, you know, just to give value um, to, you know, the, the market, to our clients, to some guests, to, um, you know, anybody who uh, follows uh, our content, to be honest. So yeah, today has been, um, you know, challenging, you know, lots of things on, I mean, fitting that in and getting ahead and writing the content for these two guys so they can continue working instead of having them sitting there, you know, just uh, you know, rubbing their hands or you know, just sitting there, just scratching their heads, you know, with nothing to do. Um, so that's been a bit challenging. I mean, at the same time, there's um, a meeting going on right now. What's the time? 4.30. Um, you know, I'm excited. I'm anticipating the outcome because it's a landlord that recently, I'm actually just heading um, to take a call shortly. It's a, well, a letting agent came to us from a landlord who was their client who had a property that they couldn't rent, even though they have rented it for the last 10 years. And it's a very large eight bedroom HMO, okay? It's been rented to students for the last 10 years at 4,200 a month, okay? So eight rooms, 4,002, some crazy driver undertaking, 4,200 pounds um, a month for the last 10 years. And they found themselves, you know, in October, the student year's already started. You know, all the students or 99% of the students are already in the properties and they found that property is still empty. It was the largest one in the city at the time available. And there's a hunt, well, 100, <clears throat> excuse me, 127 properties on at the same time, excuse me. So they were just sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, this is gonna sit empty all the way until the start of the semester next year. I got some water. 
until the start of the semester next year and they found my company online. So I hadn't worked with the landlord or the agent before. So they found my company online. We had a couple of meetings, um, worked everything out with the landlord and the agent. And then we entered into that deal, got the keys to that property, got that property let very, very quickly in three days. In fact, I was actually in uh, Prague when we let that. And um, yeah, a lot quicker than the agent could let it. They had it for about three months and it wasn't successful. We let it in three days. So um, we're definitely doing some things differently here to find tenants. So we've got a very few, or we've got a good few strategies uh, which we use to fill HMOs and student properties very, very quickly. Even quicker than the agents who are, I think, got 25 or 30 staff. They've been going a very long time letting something like, well, at least a property a day for the last, well, the last year, at least a property a day. Anyway, good friends of ours now are working together, so that's great. I'm really excited about that. And um, it turns out that after we let that one successfully, the landlord's happy, the agent's happy, we had another meeting with the agent, went down to, um, oh, someone's putting it right out in front of me. Had another meeting with the agent in my favorite place, actually, which is more or less my office in this, um, this nice hotel I've just gone past at the moment. And um, yeah, we just sat down and you know had a few discussions. This is with an agent who wasn't actively looking for agents. And then how it transpired is, you know, we met a few more times and the agent asked a few more questions. This is the agent who runs the branch. Uh, biggest branch in the city this one is or biggest company in the city I think they got 30 staff 28 or 30 and um, yeah so what happened on the back of doing that deal successfully very quickly and everybody being happy it turned into the agent has come back to me with 17 more properties and out of the 17 I looked at a handful of them which I cherry-picked and said yes we can do the same on these we'll take these from you and um, when I went back to um, the agent and said, these are the four that I want, I'll take those four all at the same time. And uh, these are the numbers, et cetera, et cetera. Now, as it transpired, after the agent going back to his clients with the offers that I put in for those four, we've had one accepted straight away within a few days. Um, due to collect the keys later today after this meeting, probably gonna be delayed till tomorrow now. And um, yeah, the three others, they're with the landlords waiting for them to say yes or no. They haven't got you know, any better offers on the table. So the offer we gave them, well, the offers are very, very fair due to the market conditions where the um, student's term has already started and the students are in, it's nearly November. So it's not looking good if you've got a student property that's vacant right now. Okay, so it turned out that as we've got the next one, the second one from the agent in um, a very short space of time and the other three are being considered, he came back to me and said, well, hold on a minute. Why did you say no to these others? Because there was 17 and we put offers in on four. So we said, well, the other 13, you know, what did you not like about them? So we sat down again and just had a meeting. I just said, look, the reality is because of the condition of these properties, because they're student properties or you know student or HMOs, which are really are geared to students, where they are, how they're dressed, desk in the room, chair in the room, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So they really are targeting students. I said the way they're presented and the lack of, you know, the condition isn't great and it needs some work and this one and et cetera, et cetera, and all the new build properties and students are choosy right now because they can be i said it just wouldn't work for us um to move forward on on those particular properties and then something that the agent said to me made me think a little bit differently he said well it was about the price it came to the price he said so what price would you take them at so i said what price would i take them at and it was literally that like aha moment where we're both looking at each other and um, he's more or less signaling me to say, what, you know, what, what price would you take them at? Because I want to get these rented and get them off of my books. 
I've got very good relationships with the landlords, he's telling me, because they've worked with me for the best part of a decade, most of them. We know, as the best agent in the city, that they're probably going to sit empty now until next year when the student year starts. So I said, the reality, if we could just work something out that's reasonable, then I could probably get quite a few more of these agreed, if not all of them. So sat down again, crunched the numbers, obviously, you know, that aha moment is in my mind thinking, I've got a, 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 a motivated agent in front of me right now with 18 properties that we've looked at. We've already got the keys to one and moved the set of tenants in. We've already collected another set of keys today. Um, and then the other group of tenants will be in very, very quickly. He's now got 16 more that he's asking me to do the same thing, but aggressively priced. So we just had a, you know, a few more drinks, not alcoholic drinks, it was daytime. Um, we had a few more drinks and spoke a little bit more in a bit more depth. And we came to the conclusion without me just putting a very, very, very low offer in is, um, wow, it was, it was part of negotiating. It was an afternoon of negotiating. We got to the point where um, it came to him suggesting a figure or a benchmark of where to be. And then me coming back and saying, look, what I'd be prepared to do on all of those remaining properties is pay your client's mortgage, exactly what their mortgage is and what their costs are. So that would be anything like um, buildings insurance, okay? So, oh, there's an ambulance coming through, I think. So I'd pay their mortgage plus their costs, their carrying costs for that property, which is only you know, a little bit over their mortgage costs. And he said, in reality, it's very likely that many of them will, will agree this because we've already done some business together. Then we did some more business on the second deal already that they're happy with. So they are, you know, really in our corner now discussing with their clients that they're empty. We're nearly in November. The likelihood is they stay empty till the end of the summer next year because students tend to come from September till about June. Some, <clears throat> excuse me, stay over the summer, but many don't. So instead of them having it empty all of that time, getting their mortgage paid and a little bit above, which is still a big dramatic, you know, the, from what the mortgages are, from the numbers that I've had and seen, the provisional figures, to what the, the rent or the asking price was, is a dramatic difference. You know, we've got a very, very, very generous margin by not taking it at the normal figure that we would offer and taking the property at their mortgage amount. So we've got even more flexibility. So I'm really excited. Right now, this afternoon, there's a big meeting going on uh, with many of the agents, um, sorry, with the agent and many of the landlords where they're discussing this right now. Their whole team is discussing this right now. So they're on the phones. Um, they're out with the landlords, you know, they're doing conference calls. Um, they're going to meet them for coffees. They're having them in the office. This afternoon, they've dedicated their team or a portion of their team to um, see how many of those 16, well, we've done 18, we did one, 17, uh, 16. So yeah, there's 16 properties left out of those 16, which ones are going to say yes and agree to um, my offer, which is just covering a mortgage. So I'm very, very excited about that right now, but I'm in the car recording this episode um, of the of documenting my day. And um, I'm obviously in flight mode. So I'm missing the calls or the text messages. So I obviously want to get this done before I get to my next meeting. And um, then I want to obviously catch up on the messages and uh, hopefully it's already in there, the message. And uh, there should be a list of properties with the yes, 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 no, 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 yes, maybe, maybe, yes, yes, yes. So I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully, um, you know, we can get well, as many of the 16 as possible, you know, un or agreed today and under contract in the next few days. Uh, dressed, styled, furnished, and uh, ready to accept um, our clients, which is absolutely ideal. So yeah, that's something else, uh, which is happening right now. 
Um, but at the same time, I've got challenges with my JV partner in uh, Sandbanks or Portsmouth and Paul, that particular area. So yeah, lots happening at the moment. Um, she's got some challenges over there, or they've got some challenges over there. And um, it's something that's just another fire which I've got to put out. It's something to do with a new deal that they found, they sourced, they've met them, they've agreed all the terms, etc. They're ready to enter into the deal and they've come back at the last minute saying, um, we looked into your company, this is my joint venture partners, and they are not completely happy because it's a new company. But they did tell them it was a new company, but um, obviously, uh, you know, they're asking for some extra security. So as soon as I get to my next meeting, that's another phone call that I need to make to try and see how we can make that work and keep them happy. But at the same time, um, give them the security that they need so we can enter into, oh, look at that, a Renault 5 GT Turbo, a red one. I haven't seen one of those for about 20 years or more. And it's just gone past now. Like a D D reg or something. <laughs> Renault 5 GT Turbo. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, what else is going on? What else is happening at the same time? Okay, we've got some listings that we need to build because we got one more property on today, uh, which will go on to booking.com. So um, I actually went there myself earlier. I think I mentioned that one earlier. So I need to go there, or I went there, sorry. And um, that needs to be built tonight. So I think we're gonna outsource that one to my assistant to get her to get on with that because there's just too much going on at the moment. I won't get around to that. And at the same time, there's another one that needs to be built. So there's another one in the backlog that needs to be built for it to go live on booking.com. And I think I will get her to do the same thing because there's just too much happening right now. And um, it's gonna be impossible. I know I, I like to get them built in a particular way from the start. So they're high converting and they're optimized the listings that we build on booking.com in particular because we've had you know very good success um over the last few years with them as our main um partner really or you know really our sole partner but we're just starting to incorporate some other um otas to get bookings from as well just testing some other otas but yeah we've been all in on booking.com for a long time now they've been great to us i mean the occupancy has been around 84 percent all year round so if any of you guys are you know operating short let service accommodation and um your occupancy isn't that high on another platform we've been getting 84 percent on average all year round on you know just using uh booking.com so yeah that's um that's all happening at the same time and yeah after that meeting it's going to be well i'm i'm anticipating the outcome i'm excited to see how it turns out i need to wrap this podcast up now or this vlog or this daily auto whatever we're going to call it i'm looking for a name so if any of you guys have got any suggestions um yeah happy for you to leave them in the comments or send me a, a direct message uh, to let me know your thoughts of what we can call this is a uh, it's a it's a daily um, documenting of the day um, while I'm in the car in between meetings. So yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts, guys. So yeah, I hope you got some value from this episode, which is just the ramblings which are going on in my mind right now and everything that's happening right now. And um, yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. I'll, I'll see you guys soon.